You need to check that you understand all the previous work done in analytical geometry and that you can use the formulae to solve problems. Do you remember how to find the distance between two points A and B? We find the difference between x values of the points A and B and square this. Then we find the difference between the y values and square this. Add the squared values together and find the square root of your answer. To find the midpoint M of a line segment, we add the x values of the endpoints of the line segment and halve this value. This gives us the x value of the midpoint. Then do the same with the y values. The gradient or slope M of a line segment AB can be found by finding the difference between the y values and dividing by the difference between the x values. Sometimes we need to know the angle of inclination of a line. For this, we can use some trigonometry. The tangent ratio of the angle of inclination theta is equal to the gradient M of the line AB. Grade 12 analytical geometry focuses on circles and it builds onto your previous knowledge. When you are solving a problem involving circles, it's useful to keep in mind different ways of seeing the circle. We can see the circle as a set of points that are equidistant from a given point. The given point is the center of the circle and we call the distance from the center to the circumference the radius. So, it follows that the distance from the center of the circle to any point on the circle is the length of the radius of the circle. The distance around the whole circle is called the circumference. A diameter of a circle is any line passing through the center of the circle which connects two points of the circle. The diameter is also the maximum distance between two points on a circle. All the points on a circle are the same, fixed distance from the center. We call this distance the radius. If we make P any point on the circumference with the coordinates X and Y and we place the center of the circle on the origin, then we can use this equation for a circle. The general equation for a circle with the center at the origin and radius R is X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. Here is a circle with the equation x squared plus y squared equals 16. It is centered at the point 0 and 0 and has a radius of 4 units. You can take any point P on the circumference and make a right angle triangle using the radius. That means that you can use the theorem of Pythagoras to calculate the radius of the circle using the x and y values of point P. At P, with x equal to 2, 1, 4 and y equal to 3, 3, 8, we get x squared plus y squared equal to 16 rounded off to two decimal places. So the radius is 4. It cannot be a negative number because it is a distance. It is given that the center of the circle is the origin and that the circle passes through the point 3, 4. We can use the general equation x squared plus y squared equals r squared and substitute our point 3, 4 into the equation to work out the length of the radius. The equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared equals 25 and the length of the radius is 5 units. What happens when the circle does not have the center at the origin 0, 0? Consider a circle on the Cartesian plane with the center at A, B, with a radius of R units. 
So the circle is the set of all points x, y that are r units away from the center a, b. To find the length of the radius, we can use Pythagoras again. This is actually the same as using the distance formula that you know. If you make a right angle triangle using R as the hypotenuse, you can work out the lengths of two sides of the triangle. The length parallel to the x-axis is x minus a, and the vertical length is y minus b. So the radius squared equals x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared. Note that if a is 0 and b is 0, then the equation will be r squared equals x squared plus y squared, which is the equation of a circle with center 0, 0. This equation is very useful. We can easily see that a, b is the center of the circle and r is the radius. So, for example, this equation tells us that the center of the circle is at 2, negative 3, and that the radius of the circle is 7 units. Example 1. Determine the coordinates of the center of the circle and the radius for this equation. The equation of the circle is not given in the form we have been using, but we can get it into the right form by completing the square. If we divide both sides of the equation by the common factor of the square terms, we can work with the equation more easily. Rearrange the terms and put like terms together. Put the constant term on the right of the equation. You should recognize that we can complete a square on x squared minus 6x and complete a square on y squared plus 2y. Half of the coefficient of x is negative 3, so add the square of negative 3, which is 9, to the equation. You should recognize this trinomial as 1 that can be factorized as x minus 3 all squared. Now, using y squared plus 2y, we halve the coefficient of y and square it to get 1. Add 1 to the equation and we have the trinomial y squared plus 2y plus 1. This can be factorized to get y plus 1 all squared. But we can't just add numbers to one side of the equation without adding the same numbers to the other side of the equation. We need to add 9 and 1 to the other side of the equation to balance the equation. So our equation is now x minus 3 all squared plus y plus 1 all squared equal to 2. So the center of the circle is at 3, negative 1, and the radius of the circle is the square root of 2.